Hi everyone, it's Pete here. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to adjust the clutch in your Armour 3S or 4S car. Now I did a video previously where I went into quite a bit of detail about taking the clutch apart but I didn't really talk much about the adjustment so that's what I'm going to do here. The clutch is there to protect your gears and drive shafts against damage in extreme situations but it shouldn't really slip in normal use. If you're hearing sounds like this when you run your car, then the clutch needs tightening. My 4S outcast here was squealing but only in reverse so it probably only needs tightening half a turn or so. To do this you can take it completely out of the car which I'll show you shortly but if you've got the right size hex driver then you can do it with the power module still in the car which is rather useful. If your car's got a chassis brace like this one then it's helpful to take it off and get it out of the way. Right so you just need a 2.5mm hex in there just loosen that up a little bit and then this bar pokes through from the other side. Okay, then we need to get the centre drive shaft out, so it's spring loaded, this pulls back here, and the bearing comes out in the middle there, let's pull the front out, get the fiddle, there we go. So like I was saying you need a suitably sized 2mm hex driver and this one from a Tamiya set is really quite good for this. You don't need to remove that red bit because there is a hole through the middle of it. You should have a catch on the screw of the clutch and then if you hold the wheels in place you can tighten that or loosen it. So that's really useful that you don't have to take all this apart to do that. So if you've heard the clutch slipping, you might want to do it up half a turn and just test it again and see how it goes. Now that might be all you need to do to solve your issue, but if you do need to get the power module out, this is how you go about it. First you need to take this screw out of the bottom, let's say two and a half mil. Right, then this red piece should slide this way. So it's the strap to pull it on these 4S cars, they've got this extra bit here to go hinge that back so the red thing can come out. Just undo the motor wires and there's also the wire for the fan here. Then you need to pull this tab upwards at the same time as pushing the module forwards that way. I find it helpful to have a flat blade screwdriver sort of go in the back there and sort of lever this forward. It'd also be helpful to put a screwdriver under here just to help lever that up. It's quite difficult to get at. You're actually doing is unlatching that bit there from that bit there so that's why you need to pull that up so the thing can slide forwards. It's not a bad idea to blow the dust out of here if you've got the power module out. Now these are two and a half mil hex. There's a long side and a short side, that's the back of the car, that's the front of the car. So the clutch adjustment's down there, it's a 2mm hex, I'm just going to see how many turns it takes to fully tighten it. One. Okay, so it is about one and a half, which is what they recommended. So just for the sake of showing, if you undo this quite a few turns, get that bit in there drive shaft on there, you should be able to turn it easily. Oh, that's still quite tight. Yeah. So you can see the clutch does slip. So I think what we're going to do is just tighten it fully and then undo it one turn and see if that stops it from squealing in reverse. That's not tight. You want it to be just on the edge of slipping in normal use so that if something happens it will slip. It's worth checking the thread lock on these motor screws while you're in here. I have just checked and actually these are very difficult to undo so I think Armour have got much better at actually putting thread lock and tightening these up enough because that was a problem in the past. So, so I'm going to leave those be. The mesh that they've done at the factory, a bit of play in that, so that's alright. Now 
Now I tend to put a bit of grease around the bottom of this to trap any sand from going under here. Brace back in. It's worth noting actually this is adjustable so you can turn that and it makes the pole slightly longer or shorter. Yeah, sounding lumpy as ever. Okay, so need to give it a little test. So on the test drive it did still occasionally squeal in reverse but I'm happy with that because at least I know it's going to slip rather than break something. Like I was saying before, there is that other video I did which goes into more detail about the clutch and the spur gear. Also there are various other videos that cover pretty much everything on these trucks. If you found this video in any way helpful then please give me a thumbs up and maybe leave me a comment. Thank you ever so much for watching and I'll see you next time.